Hi everyone, my name is Anita Wallace and I'm Chair of the Lymphedema Support Network. And I'm delighted to welcome today Dr. Catherine O'Leary, GP from Oxford, who is joining us for the fourth in our series of our expert question and answer sessions. So welcome Catherine and thank you so much for, for agreeing to join us. So why do some lymphedema patients get to see a specialist and others don't? That's a very tricky one, isn't it? That is a tricky one. I mean, it, from what we spoke about already, there is a sort of disparity across the country as to access to clinics. But um, I, would, I would hope that most patients would have access to one of the very high quality uh, lymphedema clinics that we've got across the country. We have a, a, a fabulous clinic in Oxfordshire that's nurse led, um, that, that serves our patients really well. I know that the children, as I said earlier, go to the clinic in London and see uh, Prof Mortimer or, uh, or Dr. Gordon. Um, but. I, I don't know about the experience across the country as to whether some patients just don't have access to any specialists. I don't know what they're, what they're telling you. Mm. I'm also wondering you know, what the definition of a, of a specialist is. Um, because, you know, many of the, the nurses that, um, that are able to give you treatment, you know, they are termed as clinical nurse specialist in their field. So whether this question came from from that perspective or whether they wanted more medical input from say the likes of Professor Mortimer or um, Professor Vaughan Keeley I'm not absolutely sure but if they were meaning why is it I can't get to see Professors Mortimer or Keeley I think you know and the reality is that there are very few medical specialists um, in the UK and you, know, you must remember that what we know already is that there are over 400,000 patients living in the UK with lymphedema so the medical specialists are only you know able to see maybe the more extreme cases um, you know the children the teenagers um, you know there physically isn't time to see over 400,000 patients so um, yeah, I think that, that's one aspect of the, of the reply. Um, Catherine, have you got any more to add to that? Um, I, I, I do know at the conference this week, the BLS conference, um, one of the, uh, I think she was the educational lead of the British Association of Dermatology did address the the lymphatic system and I know Professor Mortimer in his speech felt that the lymph lymphatic diseases did fit within a dermatology spectrum and I think um, I got the impression the British Association of Dermatology was probably going to um, you know look at the educational program for dermatology registrars and make sure that that had some component of lymphatic diseases within it so from a sort of medical sort of doctor perspective, I think that there is a potential change afoot there alongside, you know, the multidisciplinary teams that are already out there mm. um, doing the work they're doing. Mm -hmm. And also we come back to the module because the British Association of Dermatology are flagging up our module. So obviously they will have seen it and, um, you know, maybe they'll get more involved um, having seen the, the, the module. So thank you, Catherine. 